I think that's just a, a wonderful thing that you're going to talk about, right? The, yeah, well, the expansiveness some, uh, of the internet. Part of it, anyway. Yeah. I, I feel that after that uh, discussion about the universe, in Annie Hall, um, Christopher Walken says to Woody, I, I, I'd like to talk to you, you'll understand this. Uh, sometimes at night, I'm watching these headlights coming towards me, and I had this desire to drive on the other side into you know, this oncoming car. Woody's look, looking at this and says, well, uh, yes, sir, uh, Dwayne, I've got to go now. I'm due back on planet Earth. Um, to some extent, okay, that's where I think I'm going to try and, go and, and work on it. Let's look back uh, to that Malraux, as some of you must know, predicted that the 21st century would be the century of religion. And uh, basically, a siècle sera religieux ou ne sera pas. Uh, oh shit, uh, basically my view on that. And the re-emergence of religious discourse, Sarah Maitland says, has caught us on the hot, baffled, irritated, and uncomprehending. That's to sum it where I feel, and here I'm standing at FSU and thinking about this, looking at these two guys from Mormon land. Um, um, the reasons are manifold, and I think to some extent um, there's this materialistic world that many see, and they're looking for an identity, and the uncertainties and the insecurities are involved in globalization and diversity. Um, I think, as much as anything else, um, dogma is hardwired in childhood. It doesn't matter what, it could be Nazism, it could be communism, it could be capitalism, it could be religious ones, and it becomes a crutch that as soon as you try to take that crutch away, tremendous defenses come up. Uh, that's what we're facing in the 21st century. Uh, probably as interesting as anything is this, uh, I won't make any comment, but this is a church the modern 21st century church, uh, Joel Osteen, writing a bestseller. I'm sure he sold more than you have, than Peter, than you have. Uh, your best life now, and this is uh, what we're up against. Um, $25 million uh, was uh, given to them by the Bank of America, apparently, to build that church. My view is Enron's big mistake. They promised the payback in this life. Um, <laughs> how stupid they are, really. Uh, from the skeptic, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, does not go away. My view is my reality is actually that which others believe in, and that's the problem. And let's look at one of the most remarkable ones um, from Florida. Alan Cross has spent 24 years in jail for a crime he didn't commit. DNA got him out. Look at him. He doesn't hold a grudge, he says. God has been keeping me. It seems like he always puts someone in my life to help me through these times. It's been a long time coming. Thank God for this day. I think I, as an atheist, would have probably commit a suicide in a Florida jail in 25 years. I think I have to recognize, to some extent, how important that was to this man. Well, thank God for this day. Well, who is God? Well, I'm going to show him. It's Alec Jeffries, Nottingham University, who developed fingerprinting. That's a miracle. And I don't know whether Alan, whom I'm hoping to interview later, sometime next year maybe, uh, actually thinks about the science of it. Education, education, education in the UK. Well, what about Gaza schooling? I hate Salman Rushdie. This is from CNN. Graduation ceremony in the kindergarten in Gaza. Boys, Allah Akbar, praise be Allah, Allah Akbar, praise be Allah, Allah Akbar. It goes on, praise be, go on and on. Who is your role model? The prophet, who is your role model? What is your path? Jihad. What is your path? Jihad. What is the most lofty aspiration? Death for the sake of Allah. What is more lofty? It's death for the sake of Allah. And we're going to maybe see what comes out in those eyes. The hate of Salman Rushdie. CNN, 2001, before 9-11. Speaker draws the audience. Our blood is ready for sacrifice. Listen, America, listen, Musharraf. Every Muslim child is going to be a salva for you. A chilling message from an eight-year-old boy. No shortage of young boys who want to die for the cause. Quattarula says he wants to join the jihad. He is not afraid to die. At eight years old, how could he be afraid to die? It says, uh, basically, uh, it would be special, he says, for me to die in the name of jihad. His desire for jihad has his father's blessing. According to this religion, a woman over the age of nine cannot be seen by a man of an outside family, outside the family. In a back room, she tells me, God willing, she too would like to see her son join the jihad. That's the schooling today in the 21st century. Not that long ago, 
I showed this last year, and I'd like to show it many times. Let's play Protestants and Catholics, 30 years of separate schooling in Northern Ireland. If I were Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, this is how I would solve our problems. First, I would split Northern Ireland into two parts, and I put Protestants on one and Catholics on the other side. <laughs> David 14, I would pass a law saying that any Roman Catholic who set foot on the street to start trouble would be shot instantly and without mercy. I would starve them like rats until there wasn't one left in Northern Ireland. That's the reality. Probably in spades in the Middle East. Education 1.0. My education. Well, let's look at what my education was. It was Meccano, erector set, building things like this, and Meccano footballs. The advertisements, Meccano boys, and today we've got to add girls, of course, are keen, ambitious, and inventive. No boy or girl who follows the Meccano hobby can be a bad boy or bad girl. <laughs> uh, we go on. I, I drew things and I got good for my frog. I used to get very good for my math, so I ended up as a scientist. Um, I, I, I acted at school and I thought I'd show you this. I'm the handsome guy on the right here. The guy in the front, well, I taught him how to act. And I, if, you, if you want to know why I'm a scientist, you age better as a scientist than you do. And in fact, it's Ian McCallum, most fantastic actor of my generation. So I had a tremendous, wonderful uh, education. But what is it going to be? What should it be? It's got to be kids educated together somehow. My favorite picture of a workshop, a buckyball workshop with young people in England. And if, unless we do that, I think we're going to have a lot more trouble. We're going to go on ad infinitum. Education USA, well, they should really know about the Declaration of Independence. The main issue there is liberty. And what is liberty? Well, no one said it better. If liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. George Orwell. These guys are turning in their graves, okay, as they look at. What did they say about religious issues? It's on the internet. I haven't got time to tell you. I come from a wonderful town in England, or we lived there three months a year and did before. This is the White Hart Hotel, where Thomas Paine debated. There's a room up there just to the right of this where he discusses rational ideas. Americans come here, pilgrimage to the place where Thomas Paine developed his ideas. It's now a best western so you can stay there. Uh, Thomas Paine, certainly one of people we can be proud of. Um, you will do me justice to remember that I've always supported the right of man to his own opinion, however different that opinion be from mine. He who denies to another this right makes a slave of himself to his present opinion because he precludes himself the right of changing it. That is a very powerful statement. Jefferson, because religious belief or non-belief is such an important part of every person's life, the freedom of religion affects every individual. State churches that use government power to support themselves and force their views on persons of other faiths undermine our civil rights. Erecting the wall of separation between church and state, therefore, is absolutely essential to a free society. Adams, I was actually in Annapolis last week, where there's a monument to the Treaty of Tripoli. As the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims, it is declared that no pretext arising from religious opinion shall ever product an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. The United States is not a Christian nation any more than it is a Jewish or Mohammedan one. Treaty of Tripoli, 1797, carried unanimously by Senate and signed into law by John Adams. Benjamin Franklin, I found Christian dogma unintelligible. Early in life, I absented myself from Christian assemblies. So basically, where do the miracles come from? No point praying. He's been out to lunch since Galileo. Okay, real miracles. Benjamin Franklin was really the start of, in the USA. Lightning, of course, killed lots of people in those days. Ministers rang the church bells and prayed to try and stop the bolts coming. Lightning seems to strike, said Franklin. Uh, every time the bells are ringing. One would think it was time for a new trick. <laughs> Something that works, maybe. Maybe it's science. 